All right, so we drain the oil from the motorcycle, and this is so that we can take off the clutch cover uh, to get started putting on the clutch modification from Brox. Um, as you can see, all the uh, bolts are different color, except the one that's black, right? So it's silver, and then you have a black one with a, a little nub on the actual cover to show you that's where the black one goes. This one's going to get Loctite put on it as this is drilled all the way into the case. So we're going to make sure that you remember where that's at, and you can't screw this up because that nub tells you that's where the black one goes. We're gonna get started taking the uh, bolts off, and in the process, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna get the cover off, we're gonna take the sp uh, clutch spring bolts and spring holders, we're going to look at the clutch spring plates and thrust bearing, uh, we have a pusher and washer, and then we have friction plates, steel plates, um, we have a torque limiter spring, uh, tooth washer, uh, sub clutch hub, and clutch hub. These are the things that we're gonna be removing. Uh, and again, that slipper clutch is gonna be removed and I'm gonna show how to take that out. We're gonna be increasing the actual spring rate um, for this. I believe it goes from 270 is what the stock or OEM is. We're gonna move it up to 342. I believe that's what they call real street. So we're gonna get started here, taking, removing the actual bolts. Uh, those bolts, I believe, are 8 millimeter, and um, you'll want to remove those or just start untorquing those. And I am not replacing the actual uh, gasket this time around. And the reason why is because I've seen multiple videos uh, basically say that you, should, you don't need to. I did order a new one in case we end up uh, running into any trouble. But we're just going to untorque these now, and we'll run through this pretty quickly. And then we'll start looking at the actual, once we get the cover off, I'll show you what uh, we're going to be looking at in removing of the springs and spring bolts um, and replacing this. All right, so now we're finishing uh, up the last bolts coming off the uh, clutch cover. The last one here we have is the black one. This is the one with uh, semi-permanent Loctite on it. Uh, it's going to be a little more difficult to get off. Probably won't work with the old DeWalt here. Probably have to use the uh, ratchet. And again, um, I want to emphasize when we put the clutch cover back on, do not forget to put the semi-permanent Loctite to seal those threads up. That is threaded all the way into the case and it's under pressure. So I'm pretty sure that you guys can put two and two together. You, are, you will get oil. Um, but it's not that difficult to get at, so. Uh, now we're going to pull on the actual clutch cover, just to slightly tug, pull right off, check the gasket, the gasket looks good, and it's reusable. Now we're going to move into uh, the clutch spring bolts, the spring holders, and the springs themselves. We're going to replace this with the Brock modification. We're also going to remove the slipper clutch and put on the, the Brock modification. It's a, um, it's a round uh, block that actually takes the place of the slipper clutch. So the next step here is just to remove the spring bolts. Uh, we're going to untorque them uh, and they're not that difficult to remove. We're going to remove the actual uh, the bolts themselves and then remove the springs. All right, so now we're going to take remove the actual bolts uh, from the springs themselves, you know, and the top hat. I'm just setting those down. And the reason why I'm just kind of going through this is because it's my first time into a clutch. Uh, so this is a learning experience for myself. And if you guys see anything that you would do differently, please feel free to uh, comment. And also, if you find that this... Uh, this video is informative and you'd like to see more please subscribe and definitely hit that uh, notification bell uh, when I have new ones because I plan on doing quite a few of these uh, the next one we're going to end up doing is I'll show the in uh, the new oil pump and oil pump cover and I'll explain a little bit of that and also a pressure relief valve that's in the pan uh, we'll go through all that and uh, there's plenty more things that we've got coming down the pathway here so I'm, I'm glad you guys are here uh, to watch these. 
I've always wanted to do these and I've never seen really good videos, so I figured I'd try to bring some to you that I would like to see that help me be more confident in doing my own maintenance. All right, so right now we're uh, got the springs, the, the top hats and the bolts out. We're now gonna remove the, uh, the clutch cover uh, plate and that holds the friction plates and the steel plates. And so you want to be very careful here, as you can kind of see, is it does come right off. Uh, the very first, again, you have uh, some of them will come with you. You'll have a friction plate and a metal one that came right off with that. So I just put it right back the way it was. I was really worried about putting them back in the same spot. Um, some of the people don't really think it's a big deal. Uh, I do. Um, watched quite a few videos. And so you want to be very careful not to drop these again. Uh, that will damage the friction plates, but they're pretty strong from what I hear. Uh, I want to inspect all these. Now, uh, as I get this one put back in place here, um, I'm going to pull out the, uh, the center. Uh, it's got needle bearings on it right here in the middle, and I inspect the needle bearings to make sure they're, they're free. Uh, and again, these things look pretty good. <laughs> Uh, it's a wet clutch, so you're, you're, it should be pretty good. Um, and I just make sure that that's in play there. Uh, and I double check uh, that I have all the pieces as I pull it out. Just, uh, just to validate, to verify that I had all the pieces and I don't forget anything. There should be a washer, I believe. There's a washer behind that. And so you put the needle bearing back in place. Um, and now I'm going to take out the plunger here. Uh, as you can see, I put everything nice and neat in, and that way I keep everything uh, in order. And I'll do the same thing when I do the uh, friction plates. Again, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this out here. And I'm going to put that in place so I don't forget how to put it together. And that's one of my biggest things or my biggest concerns was not putting everything back together in the same way. Again, be very cognitive of that very first friction plate. This one is an offset. So as you can see, I'm gonna put them down, I'm gonna take them off and I'm gonna put them down the same way so that they go back up. And you can, I'm looking for any burn marks, uh, any heat, any smearing. And again, I didn't see any on these as I pulled them off. So now we're actually just gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna pull them off. And set them down so that when you do it in reverse it just goes right back in the same way that it actually you took it off again i'm inspecting every friction plate and uh, all the metal itself uh, you are going to get down to where you have uh, the spring plate spring and spring seats uh, and we'll look at that as we get closer to uh, uh, to the actual hub of removing the hub itself All right, where we made our first mistake. We have to remove the nut from the basket if we're gonna get the slipper clutch out. There's two ways of doing this. You can get the special tool or clutch holder you can buy offline, or you can use a rag, an impact wrench, and hold it and it will come off. Now, the nut is a 27 millimeter. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have a 27 millimeter. I had a 28 millimeter which unfortunately I didn't round off the nut. I did go to Harbor Freight and buy a 27 millimeter for impact. Um, but again, it uh, just requires you to push, put a little pressure against the friction plates uh, with a rag and have the right nut size or right impact size for it. Um, and you will uh, be able to remove that. It is torqued, I believe it's 110 foot pounds, um, but you know, it just requires just a little effort to get at it. So be patient so you don't round the nut off. Again, that is a 27 millimeter. I had to do a little investigating because I was like, 28 is just, just a little sloppy. But uh, the 27 millimeter, that's what you're going to need to take that nut off. And you need to remove the nut to get out the slipper clutch.
So as you can see, it wasn't that difficult to get the nut off. Just make sure you have the proper tools for this. Now, as we remove the nut, what you wanna do is keep the, uh, the slipper clutch uh, together. Um, and again, there's multiple names for this. I mean, we call it a slipper clutch. Uh, I think the right name is the OEM torque limiter springs. But you wanna keep those together. So what you wanna use is a, a zip tie so that in case you ever wanna go back to stock, you know exactly how these springs work together. So just use a couple uh, zip ties and that's what they show. Uh, that's what Brock shows on his video to do this. And again, he's got a great video to show how to do this. And again, I'm going in deeper because I'm gonna replace the oil pump. So you will never go in as far as I'm gonna go into this but um, I do want to show the beginning stages and then how I put the clutch back together and how difficult or how difficult, how easy it is. This is, you know, this was my greatest fear is I'm really good mechanically, but getting into this was kind of a nerve wracking thing because I've never done clutch. I was always afraid of screwing it up. Well, you know what? If I screw it up, it's only money. You can just replace it. So again, put them all back together the same way here, as you can see. Uh, just put a couple uh, zip ties, hold them together, put them in a safe place in case you ever want to go back to stock. I have been running this now without the slipper clutch for a while and have been road racing a little bit. I don't see any need to have it. Now, I haven't had any issues with the chatter. It prevents chatter uh, from your back tire. So if you're downshifting and the tire is going slower than the motor, or no, it's the motor's going slower than the tire, uh, and it will chatter as it's trying to slow down or trying to sync with the back tire and the motor. And that's what the slipper clutch does. Is it, it allows it to slip a little bit until the motor is in sync with the back tire. Anyway, uh, this is how I do it. Um, and now we're gonna start taking the rest of the, uh, the clutch apart. As you can see, I'm just laying those down as they're coming off. That way, when I put it back, it's just a matter of just picking it up and setting it in the same place um, and inspecting. And again, uh, I can only say that I was very happy with what I saw. I didn't see any smearing, no hot spots. And again, I'm not drag racing. I'm not slipping the clutch heavily. Um, you know, I do hit in the upper miles per hour, uh, but Again, I'm not seeing very much slippage, uh, no, no um, burning anywhere. So I was pretty happy with what, what I was seeing here. So we're just going to remove the rest of the clutch, and I'll speed it up a little bit so we can get to the end. All right, I'm on my last uh, friction plate and we're going to remove that. You may need like a screwdriver or a pick to help get at that last one. Uh, it does help a little bit, but fairly simple to get out. Clutch looks good. Now we're gonna remove um, the clutch portion that is a cam dampener is what they call it, and cam follower. So the cam follower is already off. Uh, the cam dampener and the uh, is just removed by pulling on the bolts. There's a uh, like little nubs there. Uh, you can just pull that out. And basically what that does, that uh, attaches to the shaft. And I'm just visually looking at to make sure everything looks good. There's no uh, metal filings or anything like that. I just kind of keep it clean. And we're gonna set that back down. Uh, the I didn't, I didn't show removing the spline itself or, you know, the uh, cam follower, but uh, that's what actually you're attaching the, uh, the metal plates onto. It matches in there. And you'll see that when I put it back together. But anyway, it's just a visual inspection. Make sure everything looks good. And I'm going to probably pull out the, the basket next. And that should basically be it for uh, clutch. Now you would never go down this far. And again, I'm going to be removing the uh, oil pump and oil uh, plate. And the reason why I'm removing the oil plate in the front is because the OEM 
is the flexing. It flexes, which then causes uh, oil starvation to rod bearing three at high uh, revving for long periods of time. And so I decided to upgrade to Schnitz. Uh, has an actual um, high volume pump and plate. I do recommend that for all ZX14Rs. And, um, and again, this is fairly easy to get out if you push it back and forth. Now there's holes in there, I think it's four millimeter bolts. You can actually remove that collar, which has got needle bearings in there. But if you just kind of move it back and forth and then hold it, it'll they'll come out. So, but that's basically the it for removing the clutch. And now it's a matter of just putting it back together. Okay, so now we can get back to putting the uh, clutch basket back together. I'm going to now uh, move you back just a hair. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. And again, we do have the washer here. And that is uh, the washer or the uh, spacer that actually applies itself here. And then what you want to make sure is that this is locks up. There we go. It goes all the way down. And then we're going to go ahead, and I'd like to do this together just because I want to make sure that I can see everything as it is. Oop. Okay, and that will slide right on. There we go. This goes from there. And now what we're going to end up doing is putting the uh, Brock uh, mod kit on there, which is... Uh, taking the place of the slipper clutch okay so now now that we have this we have the Brock uh, the replacement for the or the mod itself this is actually just gonna go right in that area because it's got a, a bevel or a a lip that allows that to actually push against this so and that's pushing all the way back and then what we do is we take our nut, and as you can see, it stays right right in place here until I get it up there, of course, when I say that it stays. Always works when you... Now this is... And you always make sure that it says Brock and ZX to the outside there. There we go. All right, after we get that hand tight, and we're not going to torque it yet, I want to put the clutch pack back together. We're now going to put the fibers and the metals back together in the order that we took them off. So first, since it's already got a metal plate already in the back, the next uh, item would be a fiber plate. Every fiber is going to go in the same way as this fiber is right now. Your next move will then from that point be a uh, spring seat and spring, and that's the two. So that one is a uh, just a, a spring seat, and the next one is a concave, right? So we have a metal, and then it will be the uh, spring seat and spring, and the spring is concave, and you can see that it's it's been riding on the spring seat itself as you can see the dark area here it's flat right and you put that in and then the spring itself gets put concave toward the motor and again uh, it's very important to make sure that you see as you can see it's concave and it's going to be pushed against that uh, spring seat right now you're going to put a fiber and this fiber's got a larger uh, ID as you can see um, it's uh, so that it wraps around the actual spring uh, seat itself as you can see it's not as thick and so you're going to put this in place the same way as the first fiber make sure it's correct and it just slides right on in into the grooves themselves and you just got to kind of push it in and make sure it seats properly against it 
Now you're just going to follow the same pattern for the next uh, metal, fiber, metal, fiber until you actually are to the very end, uh, which then you're going to offset the final fiber. So we'll get through this and then I'll show you um, the final step. One And again, you want to make sure you're in the same spot again. Go. And again, it's just a, a rinse and repeat process here. And again, all these look really, really good. I'm very, very happy that there no, there's no burn marks. That just means I need to ride it harder, I think. Nothing on the metal. And I did check these and their tolerance levels, so uh, it's well within the tolerance. And I'm not gonna, I don't know, top of my head, I did it yesterday or last night. Um, and now we're just kind of putting these back in place here. And remember, the last one is always one movement over. <clears throat> And I'm just picking these up after I've laid them down and just rolling it into the next one. All right, make sure I got that in the right spot. metal and another fiber and it's kind of a this is fun because I like to be able to do my own work I've always wondered what would happen if I started slipping and or if I needed to replace my own clutch or wanted, you know and it's always been oh gosh I don't know that much about uh, clutches that you know I've worked with some of them and then it's like, you know, now it's like, well, you know what? This isn't all that bad. Okay. And then the final one, which is this is the last one. That one gets rotated. Oops. I make sure that's right. These are all lined up. And then this one is rotated one, one place. There we have it. Now what we need to do is we're going to tighten up this, this nut and get the proper 100 foot-pounds of torque. All right. All right, so now we're just going to tighten up the nut with the impact wrench and then uh, double-check it with 100 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, I've seen multiple videos. Even Brock says you really don't have to torque this nut. Just hit it a couple times with the impact wrench. Uh, I will hit it a couple times with the impact wrench and then I'll double check it uh, with the uh, torque wrench just to double check it. Um, I'm always kind of over cautious when it comes to that. Make sure that you use a 27 millimeter. And uh, I did get mine from Harbor Freight. Uh, fortunately, it was very cheap. I think it was only like eight bucks or something like that or 10 bucks. It's an impact wrench. Uh, for impact wrench. Hold the fibers with cloth. Make sure you're on. And then I hit it about two or three times just to double check it there. And basically that really probably is good enough. Now that the nut is uh, to torque spec, now we're gonna put in the spring plate. Uh, there's a wide, uh, well, actually I'm putting the plunger in first and then there's a needle bearing and a washer that rides on the spring plate that sits over top of that plunger. Um, you wanna make sure that the spring plate, they have wide uh, little sections there. On the side, as you can see, those are always gonna fit in one area, so the spring plate. So with the wide, gro uh, uh, the wide grooves the, of the sub clutch hub, 
so you just kind of rotate that until it actually fits in place there it goes and then you can feel that it's actually seated and it holds it in place if it doesn't hold it in place then you don't have it set right all right so now we're finishing this up we're getting the uh, base washers put in place right now and those I believe are the 20 thousandths base wash and since we're doing hot street so we we're gonna put one 20 thousandths base washer on all six and then we're gonna put the heavy-duty uh, clutch spring that came with the kit and then every other uh, clutch spring or yeah clutch spring I guess is what you'd call it every you'd put a hundred and eighty thousand shim on every other heavy-duty clutch spring and then you put your spring top on and then you tighten it up and each one of the spring bolts is I believe is 97 inch foot uh, 97 inch pounds or uh, I believe it's 11 Newton meters so you just go through and, and this uh, you can usually tell uh, by hand tightening tightening of this um, as you can see you, you you can feel when you know you're tight enough Okay, so now we're finishing it up. Now we're going to put the clutch cover on. As you can see, the new springs and uh, the new uh, uh, pack has all been put together. And now we're going to put the clutch cover on. I'm going to start with the, uh, there's a arrow at the very top. And this is on the ZX-14R. Uh, you tighten the triangle mark portion bolt first and then the other bolts. So you put that one in first, and that's the first one. And it says to go in circle. I've I've read somewhere where you actually do it in a circle. I cross uh, tighten. Um, that's just something I feel comfortable with. That's something I've always done. Um, but again, these are torqued at 89 inch pounds. You will find exactly what works best for you. Uh, I start with uh, the one with the arrow at the very top. And then I did not forget, and please do not forget, to put semi Loctite on the black bolt on the uh, where there's a nub on the cover that's the one that you put a the black bolt and you put uh, Loctite on and then when you're finished with this you uh, you know fill it up with oil and the filter new filter that's what I've done and then you check for leaks and uh, then you put on the uh, skins later but I just double check I run it for a while I retorque them after it heats up a little bit just double check that nothing's loosened up a little bit um, again I after doing this I did not have any issues um, no leaks uh, the I had actually taken the pan off and I'll show that in a different video for the oil pump and pressure relief I had actually taken the pan off too and then no leaks so um, I was very fortunate. I did get all the gaskets in uh, about a week later. So in case I ever need to replace those, I'm ready to go. Well, I hope that this, uh, this video was helpful. If you guys have any comments, uh, if I made any mistakes along the way, if you think about things that are a little bit better, I could do things better. I am all for it. Uh, again, guys, please subscribe. Uh, this helps me continue to keep uh, plugging out some videos as I'm just getting started. I am going to show a lot more uh, videos here in the future. Um, I've got some new things that I'd like to show you. Know, I'm trying new stuff that I find on the internet that works for clean, not only cleaning but also maintaining your, your ride.